I have a couple more questions from the other rooms, which I'll briefly briefly relate. They uh, both, both or to both debaters, they go to the question of morality. Um, so first to Dr. Craig, to summarize, this is sort of two questions mixed into one. Your 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 argument. Um, your moral argument for the existence of God sort of rests on the premise that human beings are special. Is that correct? So can, that objective and, and can moral you defend values that, exist. Can you defend that, present, or that premise? Can I defend that premise? Yes. I would defend it by moral experience, that in moral experience we apprehend a realm of uh, right and wrong, good and evil, and that we have no grounds or reasons to deny or think that moral experience is delusory. It's similar to sense experience. In sense experience, I apprehend a world of physical objects outside of me. Now, I can't get outside of my sense experience in order to justify my sense experience. There's no way to refute via sense experience the person who says, I'm a body lying in the matrix, wired up with electrodes, to believe that I'm here in Vancouver participating in this debate uh, with all these people in the audience when in fact none of this is real. You see, I can't validate my sense experience through some other uh, uh, sense because there isn't any way to get outside my sense experience. Rather, you take the deliverances of your sense experience as basic and veridical, that is to say reliable, unless and until you have some reason to think that they are delusory. Now, moral experience is exactly on the same plane. There isn't any way to get outside your moral experience to test whether or not there is this realm of objective moral values and duties out there. It is apprehended simply through moral experience. That's the way ethicists work. And so um, any argument that you give for moral skepticism, I can run a parallel argument as to why you should be skeptical about the existence of the external world and deny your sense experiences. I think in both cases, we accept the deliverances of our experiences as veridical unless and until we have some good reason to think that we're deluded. And on that basis, as I say, I think naturalism's claim that there are no absolute moral truths or moral obligations is just massively contrary to experience. Uh, and therefore, I, I believe that, for example, it is not a morally neutral act, a morally indifferent act, to drive an airliner into an office building of innocent people, that, that there's a moral difference between doing that and putting it down on the runway safely. There's, there's a moral difference in those actions. And if you agree with that, then I think you, you will agree that God must exist. And the corresponding question to Dr. Shook, and before I ask this, I'm really sorry to the people standing in line, but uh, this, is, this will be the last question. I'm really sorry, guys. Um, perhaps there will be time to come up and talk to them afterward. I'm not sure. Um, but no, I'm, I'm really sorry. This is the last question. So the corresponding question to you is if this sort of moral experience uh, does not come from a god or a, a supernatural cause, where does it come from? Well, moral experience is very important. I'm glad this has come up. What is the best explanation of our moral experience? Well, if your moral experience is anything like my moral experience, it's a confusing experience. We all have in us a wide variety of rules and values that we're all somehow supposed to simultaneously be following. It's hard sometimes to know what is the right thing to do. In fact, ordinary human moral experience is quite a jumble. We're repeatedly put into tough dilemmas and we can't really tell, uh, you know, what exactly is the right thing to do. Dr. Craig says we can't get out of our moral experience. That's simply false. We can compare it with somebody else. That's how we obtain an objective perspective on reality, by cumulatively adding up individuals' reliable perspectives on that reality and making a coherent picture. Likewise, Civilized people try to do this with morality, elevating us from subjectivity into what I've called objectivity. You can't get to absolutes, but you can get to objectivity if sincere people share their moral experiences and honestly try to together figure out the best perspective. Human beings have been doing this for millennia. Sincere effort has 
resulted in a wide variety of very important objective moral truths, which this humanist is perfectly happy to commit to and is committed to. What's the best explanation for our complex, confused, hard to achieve moral experience? It's not a transcendent lone God who knows all the morality and somehow can put it into each of your hearts on that hypothesis. We'd expect our moral intuitions to remain consistently the same over time, never agree with each other unless somebody's really damaged or delusional. Morality would be easy. Folks, morality is hard. Modern day civilized democratic citizens know that, but they still trust it. This is the path of progress, not putting your faith in mysteries and revelations and ancient scriptures that end up giving you nothing but more noise and adding to the confusion. So that's in conclusion my token. Thank you.